Welcome to the Pre-Post Film Review. I'm Matt Stevenson. And I'm John Asmuth. Uh, the way things go down here at the Pre-Post Film Review is uh, we talk about a movie over two different time periods. Uh, the first chunk of audio that you're going to hear is us uh, talking about a trailer for a film. Um, we sort of maybe make a couple of predictions, say our general thoughts of what we're expecting. Uh, and then the second chunk of audio you're going to hear is from uh, later on after we've actually seen the movie um, and we give our sort of full spoiler filled review um, and it is totally spoiler filled we just jump straight into spoilers so uh, yeah don't listen to the review if you haven't seen the movie uh, and this episode we're going to be talking about the new Martin Scorsese film Silence so let's uh, jump into our trailer thoughts for this one and uh, they won't be silent because then you wouldn't really know what's going on. So, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Ferreira is lost to us. He denounced God in public and surrendered the faith. That's not possible. Father Ferreira risked his life to spread our faith all over Japan. It seems to me that our mission here is more urgent than ever. We must go find Father Ferreira. This is in your hearts, then, both of you? Yes. Then I must trust God has put it down. The moment you set foot in that country, you step into high danger. So we've just watched the trailer for the new Scorsese yeah. film, Silence. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are your what are your general thoughts on on this one, Matt? Always pretty exciting when there's a new Scorsese film out. Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably the most pervasive thought is that it's just so exciting. It's such a like monumental occasion to have a new Scorsese film, and that's. The most exciting thing about this, I guess it's also exciting because this is kind of, I feel like, been gestating for a long time. This has kind of been like a passion project for him. Yes. Um, mm. I'm not sort of sure how close it's actually come to production and stuff in the past, but I know it's kind of been on the cards for a long time. Um, I feel like mm. I've heard about it for years that it was kind of being made. And um, I know I try and, because I love school safety films, I kind of try and distance myself from as much news as I can. So the trailer is kind of the first... Yep. glimpse I've had um, and I don't really know what to expect it, it, it looks like it's going to be quite thrilling like it, it's very much pitched as a thriller I would say the, the way that the pace and the, the, the beat of the, the music and everything is kind of like very intense which is mm. sort of on par with his more recent efforts so you know he seems to be Things like The Wolf of Wall Street have a, a vitality to them and they're very kind of kinetic and though I don't think it'll perhaps mm. be as much as that. I think there's going to be, mm. it's it's going to be, uh, rollicking is the wrong word, but you know, they're full of energy, I suppose, um, which is kind of, I guess, not exactly what I expected when I heard that there was going to be a film about priests and, you know, his obsession yeah. with Catholicism. But I don't know, mm. this this trailer kind of convinced me that there could be like a, a Scorsese-esque story to tell. Though having said that, he has made, sort of tackled this in the past with Last Temptation of Christ, which I'm actually not very familiar with. I haven't seen that, so I don't... I can't really compare it to that. So maybe that if I'd seen that, I might have a better idea of what he's going to sort of delve into here. But I don't know, I'm excited. I think it looks really good. Um, what about you, John? How do you feel about the trailer? Yeah, I think... Um... I, I was a little surprised by it too. There's there's sort of like a um like quite a dark tone to it, mm. almost sort of eerie in parts. Um, and this stri- this kind of like music over the top, this like shrill kind of it's pretty intense. Fast yeah, the strings. strings and stuff. Mm. Yeah, um, I think it looks very beautiful, of course. Um, so I, I am looking forward to it just on that technical level as well. 
Um, the cinematography looks great. The performances look like they're really strong. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I, I, I don't really don't know anything about this mm. story or what, what to expect, where it goes. Um, looks like there's, you know, a fair amount of suffering and pain in the movie. Well, the trailer doesn't really reveal much in terms of plot, does it? I suppose it's like... Not really, no. Like, they go to Japan yeah. to find Liam Neeson or something or, or yeah, continue his work. And um, then there's just lots of, like, screaming and, <laughs> you know, people looking not happy. Yeah, that's kind of the extent of it. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm interested to see where it goes with uh, the idea of, like, preaching a, a new religion in a, in a country that, that sort of mm. isn't doesn't have that same belief system. Um, yeah, I guess I'm... Whether it supports that, I, I it probably will, given Scorsese's kind of... Yeah, he's... The fact yeah. that he is a Catholic uh, quite strongly. Um, yeah. I guess, like, given that I'm... My views t- t- skew very much in the atheist direction, I'm much more interested in... Like, the, I was kind of sceptical whether I would be compelled to watch... A film yeah. dedicated to Christianity or Catholicism, or you know, the, that sort of religious pursuit. But this kind, this trailer kind of convinces me that they're he's making an entertaining film at the same time. And not to say that meditations on religion yeah. can't be interesting, but if it's just going to be preaching a mm. certain viewpoint, that's perhaps yes. not going to s- stick with me. But mm. I would say this trailer makes it look like it's more than that. Yeah, mm. or at least it seems like it's there's an exciting narrative tied up with those religious themes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Hopefully. Um, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really have much more to say. I, I'm sort of cur- I, yeah, curious. And like you, I haven't read up uh, mm. a lot about it or anything. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really know what to expect other than something that looks really good, is well acted, um, but yeah, where where the sort of story goes and what we're in for, I don't don't quite know. In a way, it's kind of like a really good trailer, and it's in the sense that it yeah, doesn't true. reveal much. We kind of always yeah. chide trailers for giving away too much plot and or you know mm. spoiling certain things, and this doesn't seem to do that. Um, yeah, no, that's true, and it's not you know it's quite a lengthy trailer as well. Mm. It's not like it's a really short teaser, but. But they do, a, yeah, a good job of showing maybe some iconic imagery, but not necessarily giving away what happens. It's more about the mood and the tone and like the intensity yeah. of it all. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, yeah, me too. I think uh, I feel like we'll have a lot to talk about anyway. Yeah, I hope regardless so. of good or bad. So definitely. Let Let's uh, jump forward let's and find out. See what we think in the future. The price for your glory is their suffering. It's too dangerous. We asked for this mission. Okay, so we've uh, just seen the new Scorsese film, John. It's a it's a yes. monumental occasion. It's rare that we get to go to the cinema to watch a new Scorsese film. Um, I think mm-hmm. we were kind of optimistic, but the trailer didn't give away too much, so we're a little bit sort of unsure what to expect in terms of the film itself. Um, so yeah. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on Silence. And I guess perhaps also in general how you sort of see it sitting with Scorsese's filmography. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I really, uh, respect this movie and the filmmaking in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about <laughs> it. Is that in a good way um, or a bad way? Uh, in a good way. Um, I, I mean, you know, our, our sort of prediction that it would look 
amazing mm. was sort of the, the thing that stood out the most to me is um, the attention to detail in this film is just phenomenal. Like you really feel like you're back in the period that mm. this movie is set. Um, nothing feels like a set or a costume. They all feel very natural and real. Um, and the cinematography, while very harsh and dark and confronting, is also beautiful because mm. of that reason. Um, there's so many sort of haunting images in this movie. And, you know, we're jumping straight into spoilers, but in particular there's a sequence of these Christians being uh, crucified in mm. the ocean, which is just right. horrific, yeah. uh, but such striking imagery at the same time. And there's a lot of that sort of stuff going on. Um, so I, I was never, um, I don't know, for lack of a better way of saying, it, I was never bored watching this. I was always sort of impressed on that level. Mm. Um, the performances as well, we were sort of saying would would we were you know looking forward to, and I think across the board they were very good. Um, especially when you're watching people like Andrew Garfield or Adam Driver or even Liam Neeson, who you know quite well at this stage. Mm. They're able to slip into their roles, um, you know, which obviously is the uh, sign of a you know, great actor because uh, after, you know, 10 minutes I forgot who they were and they, they really seem committed to this cause. Um, Andrew Garfield in particular really turns into his movie um, mm. and his struggle was just like, I really felt it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't s- sympathise with him too much, but I... I could see that he was suffering and I mm. believed that suffering. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's so much about this movie and what it brings up that I that's where I get stuck on what whether I liked it or not. And I guess you have to remove yourself on whether you agree with what these missionaries are doing and just... Yeah. You know, like that. that's where it gets hard. And, and you know, to the movie's credit, it become, does become about that in a way, like the ultimate sort of crux is well how how much pain are you going to put everyone else through to pr- prove your point or to mm. to to get your your religion across you know these people that you say you want to help are suffering because of your pride almost in a way or your you know there's lots of allusions to uh, particularly with the Andrew Garfield character sort of thinking that his struggles are like Christ's struggles yeah. and um, he sees himself as like a Christ figure and Liam Neeson says that specifically towards the end. That's all very interesting. Um, but it does also ultimately come down as being for that and saying that they were doing noble work and at the very end of the movie it's like for all the persecuted Christians in Japan and all that sort of thing. And obviously... Scorsese is quite a personal filmmaker, even when he's doing these, um, you know, fairly large budget movies uh, or epic movies, I should say. And so his views and his beliefs are infused with the movie. Mm. And I can't fault it for that, but it, it, it did distance me a little bit. Um, so that's why I guess it's one of those experiences where I really respect it. Mm. And, um, and in, I did enjoy watching it for the craftsmanship and the performances. And the story is very interesting. It's one I had no idea about as a period, you know, in history. Um, and I would I would recommend it to film lovers. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily to, like, my parents yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I'm rambling, but I'm... I'm uh, I like it and I respect it. <laughs> I keep saying that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like invested in it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah I don't know what, what do you think Matt uh, what do you say than that no it's interesting I, I think we've come down pretty similarly uh, I think I'm perhaps a little bit more lenient surprisingly um, okay I uh, I don't know I, I see your point and I agree I think the film the fault the one fault of the well there's two the one the two things that I have a problem within the film, uh, and this is jumping directly to spoilers, is they're both at the very end. So when he literally hears the voice of God 
that lost me. But the flip yeah. side of that, I think, is there's almost a legitimate reading that that's not literal. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, he's pushed to such a point where he... For him to continue living, he almost need Like, his life is boiled down to that moment, and if he's going to do anything, yeah. he needs that. Uh, so, but... Yeah. I, I mean, I, I admit that that's almost a stretch. Like, if you go purely with what the film presents, he hears the voice of God, you know? <laughs> like, Yeah. And I think that's yeah. where it loses me, because I think... Up until that moment, that's very, very late in the film. That's, like, what, probably the last, like, five mm. minutes of the film. Like, it's right at the end of the last act. Yeah. Know? And then you yeah. have that little coda yeah. of him, like, growing mm. old and there's that little narration. Inspecting and the stuff. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's basically the end of the story is him stepping on that, like, the, the yeah. image of Christ. But I think before that, it's, it's amazingly balanced at the way it portrays both sides of that argument because I I was like 100% on the side of the Japanese for most of it it's just like <laughs> yeah mate get out like what are you doing you, we don't need your t- fucking dumb religion you know we've got our own belief systems like I mean yeah, yeah. they do horrific things to them but it's like mm. not fair enough but you can understand their point of view you know what I mean like I, I was more sympathetic to that like viewpoint than I was to the the Christian missionaries going in and like imposing yeah. their belief systems on this culture for no mm. reason reason other than to spread their belief system. So yeah. I really respected that. I mean they they think, you know, that there is a scene where Andrew Garfield says like it's the truth and we just want to they you know that's why they do it. E- even mm. though it is they are imposing it to a degree and it is kind of selfish. Yes. which the movie touches on. Um, there is that other side where it's like they feel like they have no choice. Well, totally, yeah. And that's, I mean, I guess that's a balance of it that I'm talking about. Like, you can see both sides of it. Yeah. But, like, the counterpoint yeah. to that is there's mo- moments, like, where you see the, the extreme poverty of the Japanese and there's that, that scene where he, like, I don't know whether he's baptising them or he's doing something to them and they can't quite speak the language properly and there's this this Japanese couple yeah. and they're like, oh, now we're, we we go to paradise or whatever. And the, he was like, yeah, no. Yeah, that comes like, up a few times. That's not yeah. how it works. You know, it's like yeah. we will all go when you die or, you know, that, but for them yeah. it's like life is so <laughs> horrible and they've been yeah. promised something better. Yeah. You, know, you can understand, like, I don't know. It's mm. I don't think it's clearly one of the uh, one viewpoint until the very end yeah they they do bring that up don't they at some point that that sort of head japanese the inquisitor or whatever mm. says something to that effect as well like they're not it's not your religion that they're they they believe that they're going into it's sort of yeah they just want something to understand yeah. or something like that yeah like they have terrible lives or something like that yeah yeah, I think I, I loved all that. Like, that I was so intellectually engaged with all of that stuff for the majority of the film. Mm. And then the, the that one scene where he hears the voice of God really took me out. And, but then I almost <laughs> made myself forgive it, like, and worked it into, like, being almost not as literal as the film seems to make it be. But then the other thing is 100% agree, the very end and the, the title card at the end about for all the Christian... Yeah. And that kind of just, like, seemed, that really seemed to jar with everything else because the whole rest of the film seemed very balanced and, like, mm. considered. Like, he was actually... Obviously, Scorsese is a very religious person. Like, he grew up as a Catholic or whatever. You know, he's that's very part. Yeah. And he's sort of wrestled with that in all of... Even his, like, mobster gangster films, they're all kind of, like... Mm. Religion is a part of their life. And he's very, he seems to be very interested yes. in, like hedonism and vanity and excess and how that clashes yeah. up against like religious beliefs of how you should behave yeah, and act totally. like that's kind of part of his dna and i was mm. this whole film seemed to be like a very rational almost just presenting of two sides of an argument you know and then letting the audience decide how they felt until the very yeah. end and i was a bit disappointed by the very end but mm. i mean having just said that i think that 95 percent before that i was I'm, le- I'm willing to let the end slip a little bit. Like, I don't think it's a perfect film, yeah. but I, I fall yeah. more on the positive for because of the majority of the film worked for me, I guess that's what I'm mm. saying. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, 
I don't know. I think we're, we're probably closer than it seems. Um, it's not like I, you know, hated anything like that. Mm. It just sort of rubbed me yeah. the wrong way Pro- for the same reasons, yeah. I think. I think we're almost on the same it, page, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's not it's not like a crime against the film no. or anything like that. Um, it's a very interesting story. But, yeah, as I said, like, I just... I don't know. It's It's... It's interesting, like a, I don't know, like Jackie or yeah, it's even not a Kubrick film, film, where you, where, film where you sit in. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a detachment, yeah. and I, I that's where I wonder though, like if people who have strong faith would watch this and not have that detachment, you know, mm. and it's meant to be. Yeah, that's a good point. Look at the the persecution of these Christians, and they're trying to do the right thing, and they're just getting, you know. But devastated. Yeah, true, but I think that that's uh, imposing, a, like a reading from the like. I don't think the film reflects that. Like you, you compare that to something like mm. the Passion mm. of the Christ or something like you know that or that where it has like swelling music and like things that are really yeah, trying to push you in a certain direction. This is very much like yeah. Yeah, that's actually one thing I really liked about this film is there's basically that's no score. Like it's all like. Yeah, I noticed that. And the sound yeah. of wind and like there's like drums every now and yeah. then, but they almost sound like they're in the distance, yeah. in, like in the space. Yep. Um, yeah, that was that was really interesting. Yeah, and there's a big sort of sound design uh, motif, I guess you'd say, with those crickets mm. at the start and the end, and sort of popping up at various points. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's not it's not manipulative in that way, and it's not it's certainly not pushing that viewpoint of look at these poor Christians. But but maybe there's a small element of that that, that people might latch yeah. onto, which is fine. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. No, I think that's almost like a, a, a through line for a lot of Scorsese films. Like, a lot of people had the same issue with something like Wolf of Wall Street and the, the excess and the drug abuse where it's like people mm. made an argument, is, is this endorsing drug use because it never comes down on a hard negative and I, yeah. I would feel like it's, it does the same thing it never goes on a positive either it just presents it and then it trusts the audience yeah. to make a view either way mm. of what mm. is right and what is wrong I think yeah. throughout his filmography he's kind of like had a respect for the audience in that sense like he's yeah never uh, absolutely of, yeah. yeah 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 for sure I, he's such an intelligent phenomenal filmmaker mm. that is yeah, I mean, I, I say all these gripes in that setting, yeah. like in the Scorsese setting, you know, where the bar is so high. Um, yeah. Having said all that, like, I when... think the trailer is so fucking misleading. Like, the, the trailer paints oh, yeah, it so as glad you a, like, that up. a thriller. Yeah. Like, I was expecting, like, a, this mm. thrilling, not adventure story, but something much more in the long line. Mm. Not that he's ever done, like, a poppy thriller, but, like, you know, Goodfellas or something like that is quite mainstreamy. You know, totally. I expected it to be yeah. you know, have an intensity to it that this this certainly does. It's almost like meditative and like retrospectively, Absolutely. I think that's bang on the money. Like yeah. we often yep. talk about like form and content. This is another great example mm. of like it's all about like yeah meditative Absolutely. religious experience and yes. sitting and thinking reflection and, and it's called prayer. fucking silence. Yeah. Like it's about sitting in silence. You yeah. know, like yeah, you know, totally. is, the filmmaking reflects that, but. Whoa, the trailer yeah. does not. Like, I feel sorry for people going no. into this expecting some, like, bombastic Scorsese yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I guess that's how you get, uh, you know, asses in seats to uh, market that way. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed the pacing of the film, mm. actually, on that note. Um, I can see, I've seen some criticisms that it's too long and that people got bored. And I can see those arguments, of course, but I... I I really enjoyed, as dark as and oppressive as it was, the atmosphere of this film, and um, as I said, the the cinematography and the the setting was so authentic that I was happy to just drink all of that in, um, as well as be like you know, experiencing this really interesting story and thematic stuff. Um, I found yeah the whole the whole journey, as you say, you know, re- the form and content reflecting off each other, and mm. um, I, I really enjoy that this style of filmmaking that fucking takes its time yep. and and lets you think while you're watching it. I Definitely. just think, 
you know, we don't get a lot of that. And uh, I really enjoy just the experience of sitting in the cinema and having time to sort of breathe in a, in a movie like this. And it's interesting as well, like, not only is it form and content, but it's, like, appropriate in the sense that Japanese cinema has a very long tradition of that kind of meditative, slow... Yes. Yeah, great Contemplative, point. is that a, is that a word? Mm. Cinema, you know what I mean? Like, the yeah. directors like Ozu yeah. or even like, you know, some anime, like Ghibli has moments of that sort of stuff, you know, it's like Absolutely. embedded in their DNA yeah. in the filmmakers in Japan and it feels appropriate that a film about religion in Japan yeah. would feel that way. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, actually, one thing I did like that I kind of, my mind clicked onto while I was watching is that it kind of felt like a a weird interpretation of like a re a reworking of an apocalypse now esque story. You know, like it's like about these two people that mm. go in search of this figure. Mm. Mythical yeah. yeah. And then when they get there he has turned into exactly like the opposite of what they had what like mm. not the enemy. Well I guess the enemy in the religious sense, right? Like he had yeah. converted. And I love the mm. fact that when they finally meet Liam Neeson in that scene and he's just, like, so at peace with... And, like, they had completely... Yeah. I don't know. The, and the, that, that d- discussion that they have was so... Yeah. I don't know. That was a great scene. Yeah, it was really good. I really liked all that. Yeah. That's a really good point. I, I hadn't thought of that, but it is very similar. Mm. Um, what did you think of the performances in general? The, particularly Andrew Garfield as the lead. Um, but mm. just in general, like Adam Driver and I guess Liam Neeson. I thought they were all really strong. Yeah, I thought they did a, a phenomenal job. Um, as I said earlier, like the, the su- all the suffering with An- Andrew Garfield was so well conveyed. Like in his his <laughs> dark journey of try of trying to hold on to his faith in such a dark mm. place um and and sort of at times questioning the, the silence you know that he's getting nothing back in return um and except all this suffering i thought that was that was really good adam driver is not in it as much as i was expecting um but his performance is strong i feel like he's always like really solid especially yeah. at, at again like darkness and suffering and there's that talk about striking scenes again the, the scene where he uh the the people that he's been off with are like thrown off the boat that's it's just horrific and it's all kind of from a distance mostly that you're seeing it um until they start pushing him down and he's so weak and and um malnourished that he can barely swim and is very easily just like held under the water by the oar um yeah, yeah, I he, he yeah, I thought he was really good. Uh, Liam Neeson, very good, but really not very brief, really, yeah, it's, it's a, a whole lot either. Yeah. yeah. Um, did anything stand out to you about the performance? No, I would, I would actually say that I didn't like um, Andrew Garfield to begin with. Like, I think he's like big, puffy, wifty hair, and like I don't know. Just when you first <laughs> see him, it's yeah. just like I was like, whoa, yeah, you know, he, he doesn't really weird. feel like a old. I don't know, missionary. I, w- I almost would have yeah. preferred if they'd swapped and had Adam Driver as the, the main mm. um, lead. But having said that, by the end, I, I was won over. Like, I do think he delivers a really good performance. I think it's um, yeah crazy that he's been nominated for, like, Hacksaw Ridge over this. I think this is by far the mm. superior performance. But, yeah, I did have my, my um, s- scepticism to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting, and I I did think a few times through it that like he has such a young, he's kind a bit of, of a pretty boy, yeah. Look, yeah, that um, when everyone's saying you know he's like this wise priest and all this sort of stuff, it's um, yeah, there is a little bit of a disconnect, but he just throws himself into yeah. it, you know, so much that yeah, you totally buy it. Um, I also really liked the what was I don't I can't remember the the character's name, but the the Japanese character who kept. It was the one guy that kind uh, of like yes. kept uh, doing what like stepping going back and yeah, forth, stepping on the, yeah, the yeah. image of Christ, like <laughs> renouncing the religion, but then yeah. asking for forgiveness and coming back. And I don't know, I just felt that was a really interesting character and a juxtaposition to mm. his beliefs. And I don't know, there was just so many moments where they had to like confront 
that question of is like w- at what point do you stop? You know what I mean? Like, is it worth p- yeah. stepping on a dumb fucking stone just yeah. so you don't get your head cut off? Or yeah, exactly. does that negate your chance Entire to get into life. the heaven? Yeah. And yeah, does God care? Yeah, yeah. And it was like he was such a great embodiment of the the other side of that argument. And like he almost begin Andrew Garfield's character almost begins with promoting that. Like he's like step or whatever like mm. step on it when they first get captured he's like just do it and then adam driver's the one that's like you can't like don't do it yeah but then like yeah. the more he does it and the more he comes back and asks for forgiveness you for there's this kind of like fickleness to it that like mm. like he, he kind of feels like he doesn't it, he doesn't have any solid belief system because he's so easily mm. s- swayed to one side or the other i don't know i just i really mm. liked that that side of the argument yeah i agree yeah he he was yeah really interesting and um i really like the performance mm. of that actor too um and he's kind of erratic kind of um twitchy sort of yeah. mannerisms and things um yeah and it, it is really interesting you're right like oh, i've got to find another word than interesting <laughs> I feel like i say that too much um yeah um the contrast between him and Andrew Garfield holding out for so long, but then so much suffering is the cause yeah. of that before he finally steps his foot down, you know, and Liam Neeson's point is like, what are you doing? Just step on it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that the Christian thing to do in this setting now is to save Exactly. Well, yeah, that, I think that... Renouncing yeah. your faith. <laughs> uh, that is one of my favourite moments is where it's like that argument right at the end, like where people, yeah. have, like, people have literally died and it's like... If we get my like atheist stuff and whether you're even com- contemplating the worth of religion, just as a religious yeah. person, if you believe so purely in mm. doing good and helping others, like, yeah, that impossible situation is just mind boggling. Like, do, do you not and hold on to the belief, or do you crumble and save them because that, like you said, that is the more quote unquote christian thing to do even though it's the least christian thing to do at that specific time oh man like yeah that moral question is like unanswerable you know (laughs) in a good way like it makes great drama yeah it's sort of what what it all comes down to um the whole film and then the silence on top of that is like well is the is that because there's nothing there or mm. is it because you have to work this stuff out yourself? Or there's a, there is that line from from God himself, which <laughs> is like, I, I suffered alongside you yeah. in silence at the very end. Um, yeah, that, that all does sort of come together very nicely at the end. And just around all that, back to I, a like film, sorry, back to a filmmaking thing, the, where they... Um, when the scene when they decapitate that one, it's probably the only bit of like proper gratuit. I mean, there's a lot of suffering mm. and sort of slow violence, but that's the one like bloody yes. piece of violence. Yeah, gory kind of that, stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There was something about that that was very, very intense. I think it had a lot to do with the, the there was a woman that was like screaming and wailing because like, the yeah. soundtrack is so subdued for most of the film, and then to mm. her scream is so intense. Yeah, and the way they kind of. Yeah just drag the body so quick. and it leaves this like this blood trail across the yeah. sand I don't yeah. know, it, was, it was incredible it was one of the most intense things i've seen on film recently yeah. you know it was really great yeah absolutely and all, all shot uh if i'm remembering correctly from sort of andrew garfield's much, perspective think, yeah. through the bars sort of um which just goes back again to my point i keep saying about scorsese and the way the cinematography and he just knows where to put a camera yeah. like it's always so so effective um and personal it's great um okay so we probably should wrap it up but what, i'm curious how, how you feel it sits within his filmography is this like top tier scorsese middle of the road scorsese bottom of the pile scorsese <laughs> <laughs> no it's definitely not bottom of the pile it, it's a it's a good film like it, as you know it's constructed very well. It's got lots of interesting stuff in it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a task to sit through. That's not, 
So that's almost a, a, yeah, it's almost a compliment in the sense of what it's trying to do in a weird way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's what kind of what the film's about in many ways. <laughs> um, I, I think just you know superficially for me, it's not up there with my favourites yeah. because it is a bit of a slog to sit through, and um, I'll just be honest about that. Yeah. His perhaps his more mm, re- not not relatable. Uh, it, stories that, that have more of a protagonist that you can sort of not even get behind, like like Taxi Driver, you, you, but they're they're more accessible yeah. in a way, I suppose. Um, and even though there's a, there's lots of darkness in something like Taxi Driver, um, it's I don't know more. I, I don't want to say enjoyable, but it is. You know, mm. like the, it's just more more interesting to me, I guess, on a personal level. So. You know, going back to the to the very start and my sort of general thoughts is that I respect the movie a lot and it's, yeah, probably upper tier Scorsese, yeah. but not something I'll, I'm going to rewatch anytime soon, I think, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would pretty much agree with that. I think it would be upper tier for me as well. Not not the best of the best, but yeah, I came out very impressed and like I keep repeating, like it, given my stance on religion, it's hard for me to, you know, enjoy stuff like this or you know I often feel alienated and like it's not speaking to me and I don't, it kind of has this mm. fundamental divide there but I don't know this really worked for me I think it's intelligent and really well made mm. so yeah, yeah I'll put it absolutely. up there with yeah definitely one more up the higher tier of the Scorsese canon for sure listening to this episode of the pre-post film review uh we'd love to hear what you guys thought of silence please uh send us an email at prepostfilmreview at gmail.com we'd love to hear what you guys think and um whether you agree or disagree uh i'd love to hear from someone that that has a strong sort of christian faith and what yeah how they yeah, sort of perceive, perceive the movie if it's very different than us or something um but yeah we, we'd love to hear from you guys so email us there if you want to oh, don't have to yeah that'd be really cool um you can also find us on facebook you can follow us there um we're also on twitter we're at pre post fr um we post new stories and sort of notifications when new episodes go up so if you want the latest news from us you can follow us there or you can also comment and get in touch with us at both of those sites as well um, the most important thing, I guess, though, is to subscribe. Um, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or any sort of podcasting app or program that you use, whatever you're using to listen to us right now. I'm sure you can subscribe. And if you like the show, leave a review. That would be awesome. We love getting reviews from you guys. Makes us feel good. Absolutely. Makes us feel fine and dandy. Uh, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, you can also find us on Letterboxd. Uh, there's links in the show notes uh, that's a great sort of film website community um, and you can you know check what other movies we've been uh, watching and rating and posting about and all that kind of stuff it's uh, just a good way to another good way to keep in touch with us you can join us next episode as we talk about the new Wolverine movie uh, Logan yeah, which <laughs> I don't know why it's just I'm really looking forward to that, but it's strange that it's like it's Wolverine because, just has this... Exactly. It's, it's like this weird little offshoot. We just like a very anti-comic book films, but there's this one little thread since the previous yeah. Wolverine film that we're kind of like secretly... Yeah. It's like dirty little secret. It's a secret little comic book film that we yeah. actually like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the, the like trajectory of those movies is like the, the first spin-off was so shit yeah, yeah it's very strange the it? other one was really good and then apparently this one's like amazing yeah. it's just uh yeah super interesting yeah so probably lots to talk about yeah, there I hope so. looking forward to it so um everyone grow their fingernails long for that one because that's, that's as close as we can get to does. being wolverine <laughs> 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 which is that's what 
curly power ones. He just had really, like, you know, the gifts with the records, but those got those, like, curly brown gross yeah. nails that you just, like, hit people yeah. with. Them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst power ever. <laughs> <laughs>